Welcome to the sanctuary of Our Lady of Kibeho here in Rwanda. And we are going to visit some of the places here. And one of the places we are going to visit is Our Lady of Soros, where there is a church for the sanctuary of Our Lady of Soros and also the rectorate, as well as the apparition chapel. And we shall also have the Rosary's Way and the source of Mary, where they get some kind of cold water. We also have the Way of the Seven the Soros Rosary, as well as the chapel of the chapel of adoration in the sanctuary here of our Lady of Kibeho, and thanks to our, our Father Eli here who has guided us together with his sister Makula, who is behind the cameras, and of course Brother Christian. Uh, we greet you from this sanctuary here in Rwanda, as you see. Uh, number seven is one of the characteristics of this sanctuary. Number seven, of course, referring to our Lady of um, to the seven sorrows of, of our Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, as well as uh, number seven, which shows theologically number, which is perfection. It's just enough to remember the seven uh, sacraments, seven, a number of perfection. So we see that Mother Mary here in this place appears to his own sons and daughters, his own brothers and sisters in Christ, and has a message as a mother to his children, as he has always had with Jesus, accompanying Jesus in the silence, but also in the words. It's so beautiful that this Our Lady, who is also called the Nina Wajambo, the mother of the word, uh, the, who is the word? The word is Jesus Christ himself. And uh, this word who is Jesus Christ himself is the word which became flesh incarnate. He became one with us. He did not want to distance himself away from us. He became one with us, among us, so that we may become like him. And we thank that, that Mother Mary collaborated in bringing this word of God to reality, making it flesh making it concrete so that you and me can touch and feel the experience of God the Father towards his children. That God who seems to be very far becomes close to his own children thanks to Mother Mary. And I think it is our role also as the, his own people that uh, we also are invited to bring the word of God close to the hearts of the people wherever they are. So this sanctuary is uh, of a uh, and a lot it can be said but what is more important is the closeness of the mother towards his children with a message as we shall see as we get closer to the subject. We are coming to us again with Brother Christian, thanks for your hospitality and for guiding us into this sanctuary here of Our Lady of Kibeho, where we have, where we have to make a pilgrimage. It's beautiful that we are all pilgrims on this earth towards heaven and we journey together. Uh, this is the, our strength, is to journey together and never alone and we are happy that uh, Brother Christian, uh, a great salation here in this Africa Great Lakes region has accompanied us to this holy place. We thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Great. Ovo Kibeho also continues to accompany us in this holy place here where many pilgrims have come. We see some of the students around to seek the closeness of Mother Mary. Mother Mary who is has a big heart for everyone is close to all of us and uh, no matter what you are going through no matter what we are going through she's close to each one of us remember we talked about the seven sorrows of mother mary and this is one of the prophecies that is said that uh, the sword will pierce your heart the sword will pierce the the heart of mother mary when we go to calvary we see our lady of sorrows with the sword piercing her heart meant that yes as jesus came into the world as a savior there were many beautiful joys that any mother could go through and mother mary felt it because she would see her son performing many miracles and that was beautiful and lovely but there were also many painful moments that she faced when she lost jesus but especially towards the last days of jesus's own life during the passion death and resurrection with all the humiliations that jesus went through as a Mother, for sure, she felt bad, though she kept all the things in her heart because she knew that great things are going to happen. 
great things are going to happen through her son Jesus Christ. She trusted that great things will happen through Jesus Christ. That even if there are humiliations, even if there are pains, even if there are crosses to carry of her son, there will be victory at the end of the story. So my dear brothers and sisters, no matter what happens to us, we may go through pains and sufferings and humiliations, but that's not the end of everything. The Lord is with us and he accompanies us in every moment because there's nothing that has escaped his own heart because he's a God who makes the impossible possible. Now, a beautiful story about this place here in Kibeho, which takes place right from around 1981, around that time, uh, when Mother Mary begins to appear, to have a message. She has been appearing in many places, in Lourdes, in Fatima, and in many other places, and she chooses here in Africa to appear in Kibeho, here in Rwanda, with a message which is Beautiful as a mother who wants her children happy and is accompanying her children. And one of the messages she talks about is the message of conversion. And she does this by appearing to uh, some of the students, some of the students in the school, which is in Africa. And so one of them is Nathalie. And one of the messages that she talks about is conversion, a call to conversion. And uh, this is the message she passes through this student. And this is, shows us that Mother Mary, of our God, works and speaks through you and me. She, he reaches through you and me. His message of conversion, his message of good news continues to go through you and me. A God who is invisible becomes visible and can be able to express himself visibly through you and me. My brother and sister, we have a message of good news to share with everyone. And that's our mission wherever we are at school, in work, at place of work. Wherever we are, we have that message of spreading good news, a message of conversion, a message of change of heart, a message of being happy, a message of good news. Am I a messenger of good news or am I a messenger of bad news? And the, one of the key messages here, she says, she calls people to conversion because she foresees that if people do not convert, there will be catastrophes that will happen. There will be a blood that will be shed. And so she starts appearing to the to the students and uh, communicating this message. And when she appears to one student, of course, many of the other students do not even accept this. She do not accept that uh, this mother man has appeared. But this child, this student uh, in simplicity presents the message of what she has heard from Mother Mary, the call to convert. And even actually some of the students who were actually trying to, 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 to knock, to mock, to mock or to challenge uh, this uh, one of the students who was Natalie, one of them also receives the apparition afterwards. Those who are challenging and trying, no, it's not true, it's not true, it's not true, you are just forging stories. Those who are trying to, they realize that the same people who, who were actually trying to be against the, the apparition, Mother Mary appears to them as well. This is a powerful message. A powerful message that proves that we really share period. And they also change their hearts. They change their hearts. And they continue spreading this good news of what Mother Mary is speaking through them. And this is a beautiful message to keep in, in this sanctuary or so. And we see Natalie in simplicity passes on this message. She does not keep it to herself. She passes it on to others. And the Mother Mary continues to live and making many appointments. And one of the appointments that she will come, she even says she, she loves one song. One song. She, apart from calling herself that she's the mother of the world, she says she loves one song and she's in Kinyaranda. And she loves, it to, to, she loves the song to be sung. But it's beautiful that this word, Nina Waisha, the mother of the world, for a person who never started, it was something unthinkable that you have such a theological concept of the mother of the word, because the word is Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. The word which was invisible becomes flesh. So that's why when they were trying to see whether this apparition is true, the many theologians look hearing from this 
this this this lady, these girls who had received the apparition, especially uh, when you were referring to Mary as a mother of the word, you are saying, how did you know this word? The woman, of the, the 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 mother, the the student who had never gone to school at that time in the sense of studying deep theology, he was of course just studying his, his studies, as able to define as the mother of the word, that was already a clear message. And so to show that there's something beyond, because such a student wouldn't have known that that concept of mother of the word. So we see the apparition continues here, and when she appears, we see that one of the, the students with Natalie seems to be very focused, focused on Our Lady at a particular time that she had promised, and we see that she's focused. And even if they were trying to even pierce on her eyes, there nothing would blink. She was so focused on Our Lady. And even psychologists, when they were trying to also evaluate this uh, Natalie, they found out that uh, really everything, humanly speaking, was okay. It was not like a dream or a fantasy. Everything was okay. Her mind was okay. And uh, everything was programmed as she was saying the words. Even the apparition, the moments. The moments even which the rains even came as a sign to show her closeness to to the people. To show that really it is the mother Mary speaking to her children, calling them to conversion. And this was foretelling even what would come later on as the genocide. A very painful reality that took place, especially beginning in the 90s, 91, 92, and had the climax in the 94, where many, many, many people lost their lives. Remember, she was calling for conversion. Conversion, and the people who were hard hearted, uh, that's what came up after. That people now started to kill each other. The, she had over to, foretold the blood which would flow in the rivers, and the blood started flowing in the rivers between 90s, 1992, and the, finally 94. And where people were killing each other because of a poisonous kind of uh, ideology that was spread. And because people were hard hearted at that time, some, most of the people. And they were hard hearted, and they imagine human person how he can be hard hearted. Am I a person also who is hard hearted? Or am I a person who allows my heart to be converted from what is bad to what is good? A good person, a human person, a normal human person will not do evil to another person. And today's world, we see many of these forms of injustice taking place. We need to pray for peace. We need to pray for justice, for love, for brotherhood, for solidarity. To make this world a better place. And we are here in the sanctuary to pray for you, my brother, my sister, for this love, for this solidarity among God's people, among all of us, because we are one family, one people of God, without any discrimination. So we see that at this moment, what Mother Mary foretold before in the 81, 82, 83, when it is fulfilled, because people had become hard hearted, is fulfilled when people start shedding blood. Are we really people who heal others or are people who continue shedding blood of others, hurting others and unjustly? May we be people who are instruments of peace, not people who create war. Our world needs healing. Our world needs peace. And we are here to pray for all those people who are disturbed in, in their peace, who don't have peace of heart, no peace in their families, no peace in their countries. This is a place here in the sanctuary. We are going to pray for you that Mother Mary, through the intercession of Mother Mary, she may intercede towards her son so that we may experience this peace. Especially this land which receives us, this beautiful land of Rwanda, but all the lands of African continent and in the world. And we see, as we saw, this many of the characteristics here is number seven. The seven sorrows, number seven. Most of the architecture of the church also has everything to do with the number seven. And we pray in this sanctuary that Mother Mary may accompany us as a mother accompanies her children in every form of their lives. Mother accompanies her children as, as they are. The good ones, she accompanies them. She never gives up. The bad ones, she accompanies them. And she never gives up. May we be like mothers with a big heart who accompany others as they are. This is our, this is our mission. This is the great gift. We are called to love. We are called to forgive. We are called to reconcile. We are called to make this world a better place. So that we make this world a 
peaceful and loving world where everyone can feel at home, where everyone can be a brother, a sister, a friend, a father, a mother. And Mother Mary teaches us all that when she contemplates and keeps all these things in her heart. There are many things she couldn't understand immediately. She kept them in her heart, not in her mind to break her mind. No, she kept them meditating them on her heart because in due time, even as St. John Bosco would say, in due time, some of the things are understood. Some of the things we do not understand them immediately. Some things we understand them in due time. And so we just pray for the gift of patience to understand what happens sometimes in our lives. It's not easy. Sometimes it's painful. But in due time, we will understand. Let's continue just entrusting ourselves to Mother Mary and entrusting ourselves especially to Jesus Christ Himself, who is the master of everything, who can change the impossible into what is possible. So we bless you once again and greet you from this sanctuary of Mother Mary here in the Kiberho, here in Rwanda. And may Almighty God bless you in whatever you are going through, um, that you may feel the comfort of a mother, the comfort of a brother, Jesus Christ, the comfort of a father, our God, and the comfort of each other as brothers and sisters. And may God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> But your friends, as you see, the sanctuary is of Our Lady of Sorrows, Kibeho. Our Lady of Sorrows, Kibeho. And it was constructed according to the orders of Our Lady. She was the one giving indications on how it should be constructed. As we saw, one of the characteristics is number seven. And of course, we know the seven sorrows of Mother Mary. As a mother who kept all these pains in her heart and never made noise as many would do and thanks to that she was able to meditate them and to ruminate them and to overcome them sometimes when we go through pains full situations we have to, to, to pray for the grace of cooling down to meditate about them to think about them to pray about them to sleep over them and then we realize that those which seem to be negative become also positive it was opened in 2003 our lady of sorrows meaning that the last word is not sorrows it's victory and in this place, of course, is one of this, the places where the altar is also blessed when there are many other pilgrims who come and pray in all these places here. Now this place here has become a place of pilgrimage in, for many people all over the world. Now right now we move towards the site or so to, to kind of have a look at some of these messages of Mother Mary, whom she also communicated to her own children because she loves the children so much. And when a mother loves a child so much, she has words and messages for that child, for the betterment of that child. So, Mother Mary has a method for you and for me and for us, all these children. Dear friends, once again, we have the message of Our Lady of Kibeho here, as we can see. And uh, one of the first messages here, which she communicates to her children, to you and me, is that I am the mother of the word. And the word we saw is Jesus Christ. I'm the word of Jesus Christ. That's what surprises everyone, that how is this child able to know that is the man of the word? What is this word? Theologically speaking, you need somebody who knew catechism, but this lady had not yet known catechism. I think it's Nathan, Nathan, Nathan. The second message we hear is, the child of Mary accepts his own sufferings. That you and me, wherever we are, suffering is part of the process that we go through. We should not run away from the sufferings. And suffering is a way towards sanctification. Not because we look for it, no. But we have to accept it, knowing that everything does not end with suffering. We, when we follow Christ, when we follow our mother Mary who followed Christ, our sufferings become victorious events. Then repent without delay, meaning we have the occasion today to repent. We don't need to wait for tomorrow in order to repent. We have the occasion today to do good, to repent and do good and turn our hearts towards good. And you are suffering in order to help Jesus to save the world. One way of help, of saving the world is to go through the way of the cross. Sometimes in helping the world to be healed, we sometimes find ourselves in painful situations. It may not be just something sweet and we are, we are helping the world to heal and we are smiling everything smooth. If it happens, thank God. But many times, when we're trying to do good, when trying to heal, we may go through some uncomfortable situations. And that's why we are invited to you and me to help Jesus to heal the world and to save the world. Because the mission of Jesus was to save. 
And this mission which Jesus accomplished once and for all continues to, through you and me who are followers of Jesus Christ because of the spirit of Jesus which is working through you and me. And then we hear another message is meditate the rosary of sorrow of the Virgin Mary. Our Mother Mary, the rosary is a pray, beautiful, colorful prayer that our Mother Mary invites us to meditate on. And we know very well that the rosary is actually meditating on the mysteries of our Lord Jesus Christ. Though it is about Mary, it is as far as Mary, how Mary contributed and contributed to bringing forth a savior into our hands. And the, but when we contemplate and pray the rosary, we are praying Jesus Christ. We are praying the word of God. We are asking for the intercession of Mother Mary. We are not praying to Mary. We are praying through the intercession of Mother Mary so that she may intercede for us towards Jesus Christ. So we are invited to pray the rosary. And pray always for the church. Church people of God. Church uh, to pray for everyone. When I feel happy, I pray for those who are happy and those who are not happy. When I don't feel happy, I pray for those who are not happy and those who are happy. I pray for everyone without distinction of color, race, religion. We are invited to take one at each one and pray for each one as brothers and sisters. And be strong in faith. So to pray always, always, not only once, but always for the time. And then to be strong in faith, in our belief in our God who makes the impossible possible. Lord, increase our faith. And another message is pray always for the world. Today's world needs a lot of prayer. And we can embrace the whole world through you and me to pray for all the world. And repent so that you may not fall in hell. You may not fall in the fires of hell that burn us and from the evil, that burn us completely. We are invited to embrace happiness forever. Not hell or death forever. So the Mother Mary has a message to repent so that you may not fall into hell, not fall into death. We are supposed to be people who give life forever, joy forever, love forever. Then Mother Mary has another message that meditate on the rosary. And she says also that nobody will enter into heaven without suffering. Meaning, it's not that we are looking for suffering. That would be sad, you see. But she says that in the journey of life, as we are trying to be happy and to make everyone happy, unfortunately, there are some situations which make us not happy. But one of the ways to, to, to help others be happy is to face the suffering as it comes. Not because we choose it. No, it may come. And you will see just, an, for example, an example of a parent who sacrifices, who goes through pains, working hard, even sweating, so that the children can enjoy life. And so this is what we say, that nobody will enter into heaven without suffering. So suffering is part of our reality. And our Lord Jesus Christ himself suffered. He died, but he resurrected. And it proves to us that we who follow him will also suffer, die, but also we shall resurrect. And come back to God. We came from God and we returned to God. And this is the message that Mother Mary has for you and me. May Mother Mary continue so accompanying us as a mother of God's children. May we always feel her comforting presence in our lives, even when the situation many times may seem to be tough for us. Let's call on Mother Mary. She has a heart which is so big that embraces all of us, as she did with Jesus Christ, as she did with the disciples, and as she did with all the people of God, and as she continues to do today. Because here we have the chapel of the apparition. The apparition of Mother Mary with these three girls to face movies. Here at this point, this moment, this moment here, where the apparition took place. And then, of course, whenever there was a, a kind of like a point where that Mother Mary promised that she would come to communicate the other kind of messages, this was where the place of, of the apparition took place in this, in this place here. But uh, the apparition, why? Yeah, yeah. Where she communicated the messages that we just read right now. The mother of the word, the mother of Jesus Christ. So, so we enter into the eyes of praise in this channel of appreciation.
So dear friends, once again, we are here in front of our lady of Soros Kibeho. And this is the typical sign of our lady of Soros Kibeho. It's a sign of pointing high, sign of prayer, sign of prayer, sign of contemplation, sign of meditation. And she's inviting that story to point high to pray, to raise everything to God on high, to pray, to offer everything to God, not to present to solve everything alone. And as we saw already in the background, the chapel of the apparition in the dormitory where she appeared to the, to the students. And right now, one of the, the who received the apparition, Natalie, she stays in that room over there, in that place there. That's where she stays. She's praying for sure right now. I'm praying for you and me. And we too are joining God. We're joining all people in the world to pray for peace. And we're praying for you, my dear brother and sister. Whatever you're going through, we're praying for you here in this sanctuary of our Lady of Soros, Kibeho, Rwanda. God bless you. May God console you, comfort you in everything that you are going through. And may we continue pointing everything back to the Father. Everything which begins from the Father, may we also orient everything to the Father who knows why the things happen the way they happen and who knows how to draw good from those situations which may not necessarily be good. God bless once again in the sanctuary of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.